Well, uh, tell everybody your name. I see. I see. Are those your initials? No, that's not me. I see. Like I see cold. <laughs> uh, I see. I see cold. All right. You have a last name? Yeah. I just told you. It's cold. Oh, right. I see cold. All right. That makes sense. So your initials are I see. <laughs> Never mind. All right. <laughs> and you are from, uh, Penguin, obviously, and you are from the Arctic? Nope. No? Nope. Penguins don't live in the Arctic. They don't. Nope. It's too cold. <laughs> cold. <laughs> don't like the cold. All right. Where do you live? Down south. Antarctica. <laughs> it's warmer down there? No! It's cold! Cold! <laughs> don't like the cold. All right. And uh, did you fly up here to Vegas? Got wings? No, we don't. We don't fly. Wings are too small. Okay. Did you walk? Yeah. That's a long way to walk. Yeah. I do not have happy feet. Not that kind of penguin, I guess. No happy feet walking in that cold and ice. Yeah, it's cold, cold, cold. All right, all right. So uh, today, uh, welcome to church. Thank we are learning about uh, forgiveness today. Also, that's uh, that's uh, when somebody is uh, mean to you, for example, or they do something that hurts your feelings, like calling you a name. Yeah, like calling you a name. Yeah. Oh, does somebody call you a name? Yeah. What they call you? Big D. Big D. Yeah. Why would they call you that? Because I have a big beak. <laughs> I think your beak's just fine. Thank you. Well, you're welcome. But it uh, hurt you when they called you big beak, didn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it made me sad. And mad. Yeah. All right. We get sad and mad about that. And so what are you going to do about that? Use that big beak. Use the big beak? Yeah. Peck them. <laughs> <laughs> you know, don't stop. No pecking. No pecking. It's good to have a big teeth then. <laughs> we don't peck people when we get mad at them, or we don't kick them and punch them or push them. We don't do any of that sort of thing. What do you do? Well, if you do all that, it uh, just, you know, makes things worse. You call them a big teeth. <laughs> you don't call them a big big either. You tell them a big big, and then they think uh, they have to call you something. You have to call them something, and then they call you something because you called them something because they called you something because you called them something because they called you. It goes on forever. You don't want to do that. What do you do? You end it. Uh. <laughs> you end it. <laughs> you kill them. <laughs> No killing. Killing is out. No killing. What do you do to end it? Well, to end it, you can try forgiving them. What is that? Well, forgiving them is uh, somebody hurts you. And uh, instead of staying mad at them or hating them or to, you know focusing on those things they did for you, you, you give that pain over to God. You let him handle it. Boy, why? Good question. Well, first of all, because God tells us to. And doing anything that God tells us to do is always a good idea. But also, you know how when somebody uh, says something nice to you or does something nice for you, you feel all warm inside? Yeah. Yeah, you know how somebody says something mean or does something bad to you or calls you something and it makes you feel cold inside? I don't like the cold. It's cold. Cold, cold, cold! Cold, 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 cold! All right, all right. Cold! All right. Cold. Are you done? Yeah. Okay. And that coldness inside, uh, it sort of, it hurts you. And it makes you sometimes even feel sad or even kind of sick and stuff. And 
So you give it to God, you say, I forgive that person, and then you, you, you let it go. Aren't you just saying it's okay they did it? No, we're not. We're not saying it's okay they did it. You're saying you're not going to focus on it anymore. Every time you think about it, it hurts you more. Why are you going to let that person who was mean to you hurt you over and over and over again when you could stop it? You have the power to make it stop. Well, the power of forgiveness. That's right. So you won't feel cold inside. Ooh. I don't like cold. It's, yeah, I know. <laughs> it's cold. So you just let it go. everybody the splinter and say look at the splinter Craig got the splinter in my finger here my friend Craig he calls me his friend me his friend and then he got a splinter in me like that and every place I could go I could show people the splinter and it it didn't really hurt all the time but only when I touched it and then it hurt ow 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 so I kept doing that ow 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 and then it and then I left it in there and it got it, it gets really infected and it could get infected it could get all red and pussy and everything and then you could walk around and go look hey to me. And then your finger gets so infected that you have to cut it off. Now you got no finger. Now you walk around and go, hey, look at that! My friend Craig did that to me. <laughs> that would be crazy, wouldn't it? Why wouldn't you just take out the splinter? But that's what we do. That's what we do. We leave the splinter in. So today we're talking about Forgiveness. And if there's one thing I want to get straight with you, right off the bat, forgiveness isn't for the other person. It's not for the person you're forgiving. It's for you. Yeah. Now, this movie Guard Dog, um, there's a scene in it that got cut out of the movie. But the Guard Dog is explaining to his friend Chance, the little boy, about forgiveness. And he's, he puts it this way. He says, forgiveness is like a, a choke chain. And somebody puts a choke chain on you, and they hold on the end of the leash, and they can pull it any time, and it chokes you. And whenever they want to, they just go, When if you wanted to, you could just take the chain off and set it aside. But that hurt. Whenever they want to, if you don't take that chain off, they can make you go, whenever they want. So the forgiveness is not about the other person, not for the other person, it's, it's for you. I will explain more about that, but the Bible talks about forgiveness 113 times. That's pretty important. I'm going to look over just a few of them here, we'll read it together. Get rid of all bitterness, passion, and anger. No more shouting or insults, no more hateful feelings of any sort. Instead, be kind and tenderhearted to one another, and forgive one another. As God has forgiven you through Christ. It says that when you stand praying, if you hold anything against anyone, forgive him. So that your Father in heaven may forgive you your sins. And do not judge others, and God will not judge you. Do not condemn others, and God will not condemn you. And forgive others, and God will forgive you. And finally here, uh, you are the people of God. He loved you and chose you for his own. So then you must clothe yourselves with compassion and kindness and humility and gentleness and patience. Be tolerant with one another and forgive one another. Whenever you have a complaint against somebody, you must forgive one another just as the Lord has forgiven you. You're catching a pattern here? Why do we forgive? Because God forgave us. Did we deserve it? Not really. Does that person that did this horrible thing to you that you should be forgiving them for, do they deserve it? Probably not. But that's not the point. 
Forgiveness isn't about deserving. It's about serving. It's about doing what God told us to do. And he takes this pretty seriously. Jesus told us this, For if you forgive men when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive men their sins, your Father will not forgive your sins. Whoa. Yeah, that, that's a pretty serious statement there. When we make mistakes, we want forgiveness. So why don't we forgive other people? Well, I'll tell you why, because it's hard. Forgiveness is hard. C.S. Lewis said everybody thinks forgiveness is a great idea until they got somebody that you need to forgive. <laughs> See, because in our world, you don't get something for nothing. You want something, you pay for it somehow, or you trade for it somehow. You always just an exchange of some kind. You give something, you get something. But with forgiveness, you give it without expecting anything in return. Oh, wait a minute. That's not how the world works, buddy. But that's what we're expected to do. Yeah, what about me? What about my feelings? Am I supposed to magically conjure up some sort of uh, friendly magical feelings towards somebody that uh, has hurt me a lot? We're going in and out here, aren't we? We are. Yeah. You getting that? Yeah. We'll keep working on that. So do I just let this person that hurt me get away with it? The crime is erased? Let's talk about what forgiveness isn't. Forgiveness isn't acquittal. It's not exoneration. Acquittal means that the person didn't do it. He did it, and you're not going to forget it. You heard the expression, forgive and forget? Ha! Doesn't work that way. You're not going to forget it. If you forgot it, you wouldn't need to forgive it. Because you wouldn't remember it. <laughs> Forgiveness does not mean we're saying that it's okay that they did whatever they did. And it doesn't mean that you have to make up with the person or be friends with that person. It's okay for you to say to yourself, that was a mean thing you did. And I'm not going to hang out with you anymore. And it doesn't mean that you don't seek justice. If somebody does something to hurt you, you should have reported to an authority. And they should have some sort of punishment for it. But what forgiveness does mean is letting go, releasing whatever power that incident holds over us, taking off the leash. So I give you a good working definition here, forgiveness, the willingness to let go of self-harming or ineffective forms of anger, choosing instead to turn over the ultimate resolution of the wrongs to God. So how do I do that? <laughs> Good to know. I'm going to give you 12 steps to forgiveness. First of all, start with the first and foremost. We, know, we need to know and experience Christ's love in our own life. And His forgiveness for us. Remember, this is between you and God. Not between you and the other person. This is why... When you're going to forgive somebody, you don't go up to that person and say, I'm going to forgive you for what I did. Because that person might very well turn around and go, what? You're going to forgive me? Oh, no. It's your fault, man. You don't forgive me. I didn't do anything. And then you go, well, fine. I won't forgive you. <laughs> kind of ruin the whole point. When you're going to forgive somebody, first of all, you decide to do it. And then you talk to God. And you say, God, I forgive them for what this is. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take off the joke chain. I'm going to let it go. And then if you happen to walk up to that person, if you decide to share your forgiveness with them and let them know that you've forgiven them, which isn't required, it's just a really nice gift to give to somebody. But if you decide to do that, and they should look at you and go, Well, you know what? I don't, I don't do anything. To I don't do anything. You can't forgive me. Doesn't matter what they say. Because you've already done it. It's done. 
Maybe, okay, so that's step one. Step two is we need to choose to forgive. We begin by deciding, not by feeling, because if you're waiting until you feel like it, forget it, it's never going to happen. You decide, yeah, I'm going to forgive this person. That would be a lot easier if they apologized or if they indicated that they were going to change the way they've been acting or whatever. But you know what? That, that doesn't happen a lot. And what if they don't? What if the person that hurt you doesn't even know that they hurt you? When Jesus was beaten by people and nailed to a cross and looked down upon the people that had done that to him, what did he say? Forgive them, Father, because they don't know what they're doing. Number three, we need to put aside our personal need for power. Not only the power of punishment and revenge, but just the power of being the one who's right. That's hard to do. Philippians 4.13 says, we can do all things through Christ because he gives us strength. In other words, don't try and pull this off yourself. It helps if you, you go directly through God. Tap into Christ's love. And that will help you. You've got to ask yourself, do you want to be right? Or do you want to be happy? Number four is pray. Pray. Prayer makes the process easier. And as you pray, try and see the offender as God sees them. That person too is a beloved child of God. <coughs> For some people, the animosity is so strong in them that maybe you just have to pray to be able to be willing to forgive. <laughs> it's a start. We have a, a thing coming up starting August 5th it's called 21 Days of Prayer. Here at the Springs, we urge everybody to spend 21 days of serious prayer. Find the time of your day when you can sit down and talk to God. Even if it's while you're driving to work, take that time. Turn off the radio. Listen to God. Share what you're thinking with Him. Some people mix this with fasting. Some go. Some use a microphone. I'm going to switch to this mic. How's that? Yeah. Good. All right, number five is admit your own faults. <laughs> but if we recognize that we mess up a lot, and we're in need of forgiveness, and it's a lot easier to empathize with somebody else. Forgiveness is another way of saying, you know what, I make mistakes in life, and I want to be granted that privilege, so I'm granting you that privilege, too. Number six, see the bigger picture. Realize that that person that said that thing to you that day, or did that thing that week, that's not that entire person. That was one moment in that person's life. Maybe they were having the worst day ever. Maybe they were going through something in their mind. Just, they are more than that one terrible thing they said to you. There's more to that person. So try to assume the best about people. I remember a long time ago, there was a movie on TV. It was one of those revenge movies. And this guy's wife gets killed in a car accident. Some guy cuts him off. and. Uh, and, they, and they crash and, and the wife dies and this guy goes nuts, he goes nuts, he's going to stop every bad driver in the world and the way he decides to do it is he buys this big old tow truck and he builds this giant harpoon on the back of it like this and then he goes crazy and whenever he sees somebody drive poorly he runs over and he runs them off the road and crashes them or he takes this huge harpoon and shoots them with it. Uh, it's crazy, it's like Moby Dick with the whale. <laughs> And it, it, towards the end of the movie, there's this person who goes shooting past him, and cuts him off on the freeway, and goes down, and he's like, boom, and he hits the gas, and he goes after this guy, and he hits his remote control, and boom, the big harpoon comes out of the back of his truck, and it's so cool looking, and he's, he aims at it, and he boom, and it goes right through the back window of this car, and it jams into the thing, and he hits his brakes, and that car screeches to a halt, and he goes running out, and he throws open the door, and this guy's like, what are you doing? My wife's in the middle of having a baby here. Oh, they're terrified that she's having this baby. And that's what changes this guy's thinking. 
Try and think the best of other people. Try and think that one moment might have had a reason. Number seven is take your power back. Continually blaming somebody else for the suffering that you're going through is giving them a lot of power. Why do you want to give this person that you probably don't even like all this power over you? You've got to say to yourself, they did this thing. It hurt me terribly, but I'm not going to let it take over my life. Don't give cruel people power over you. It's a waste of life. Take the leash off. Number eight is you need to train yourself to forgive. It's not something that comes natural to us. But there are possibilities for us to forgive every single day of the week, all the time, constantly. You're going in the parking lot, somebody swings in front of you and takes that last space. Instead of screaming and yelling and making gestures, just forgive them. Wives, when your husband doesn't take out the garbage and you told him to, forgive them. Hear that cat? <laughs> Husbands, your wife leaves the tube off the toothpaste that drives you nuts. Forgive it. Just let it go. Practice little. And then, like lifting weights, you, know, you start small, but then you get bigger and bigger and bigger. Pretty soon, you'll be able to forgive the big things that have happened to you. And now, once you get to that point, make a hit list. Take all those people that offended you in this life, big offenses, like, all right, when I said the hit list, I don't mean like a hit list. <laughs> no, what I meant was, make a list of people to uh, deal with in your head. Decide. You have to make it this. Decide to forgive them. Say the words out loud. God, I forgive this person for doing this. Because I guarantee you, everybody in this room has somebody that they need to forgive for something that happened to them. Kids are better at this than grown-ups. Yeah. <laughs> yep. You kids are better at us than, than we are at this. When I was young, I loved Mad Magazine. It was a cartoon, and I'll never forget it. It was two little kids, and... The one kid does something, the other kid does something, and pushes this one, the other one pushes the other one back, and they both burst into tears, and one goes and bangs on the door, and the dad opens the door, and she points at the other little, other little boy, and the little boy runs and bangs at his end, and he points at the little girl, and the two dads look at him, and they come together, and they're like, Rrr! and the kids in the background are like, so you want to go play? Yeah, okay, and off they go. And the parents are now. I never forgot that, it was a great cartoon. But you ever notice how quickly little children forgive? And forgive? You know, they just, yeah. You ever notice how happy and full of energy kids are? There's an expression, bury the hatchet. That doesn't mean <laughs> in the person's head. Bury the hatchet means uh, let it go. Let it go. But with forgiveness, one of the things you want to bury is bury the chat. Not the hatchet, but the chat. In other words, stop talking about it. Every time you see somebody, you know, stop, stop talking about it. Let it go. Martin Luther King said, forgiveness is not an occasional act. It's a permanent attitude. Number nine, trust in God's judgment. If you really are having a hard time getting over something that somebody did really, really, Remember that if you believe in God, you believe that God eventually judges everybody. And so, leave it to God. Proverbs says, do not say, I'll pay you back for this wrong. Wait for the Lord, and He will deliver you. And Paul writes in Romans, he says, don't take revenge, my friends. But leave room for God's wrath. For it's written in His mind to avenge. I will repay, says the Lord. <laughs> Just do that in your head. You'll get yours. Because one day, leave it up to God. Confess. Confess. That's number 10. Talk to a friend or a pastor or a counselor. Talk to them about it. Tell them what's going on. This is not to reopen the case and once again reaffirm the offender's guilt. It's just to admit that this hurt has taken over way more of your life than it should and you need to deal with it. It's not healthy. 
It's not about the original injury that you're talking about. It's how this has affected your life because of it. You need a release of these painful feelings. You need support. You, you need a different perspective, a clearer, uninvolved perspective. Where you can talk to somebody and they can stand back and say, yes, but maybe, I don't know. It's good to get that. Talk to somebody. And then number 11 is ask for help. Ask for help. Go to God. Ask for the ultimate help. Look, you might think forgiveness is beyond you. And maybe it is, but it's not beyond the one that was nailed to a cross and looked down on his tormentors and said, I forgive you. I understand. So, if we tap into Christ, we can do things that otherwise we might not be able to do. And finally, 12 is have faith that God can help you. Because he's the power that behind our ability to forgive. Pinkola Estes put the results of forgiveness this way. You tend to feel sorrow over the circumstances instead of rage. This is the result of having forgiven. You tend to feel sorry for the person rather than angry at them. You tend to have nothing left to remember to say about it all. You understand the suffering that drove the offense to begin with. You're not waiting for anything. You're not wanting anything. There's no lariat snare around your ankle stretching way back from there to here or choking. You're free to go. It may not have turned out to be a happily ever after, but most certainly there is now a fresh once upon a time waiting for you from this day forward.